remember opening the email that said, congratulations, Betty Call, your Sjogren's is a 2013 Reader's Favorite Gold Medal winner. I was flooded with the gamut of emotions that I had been experiencing for the past couple of years. And I reflect back to when I first started writing the book two years ago, and now to find out that the book had won a gold medal in an International Book Award contest. It was just very emotional, and I thought back and how ironic it was that that email came exactly two years to the date from when I first read the headlines in 2011 that Venus Williams had pulled out of the U.S. Open because of a disease called Sjogren's Syndrome. So my hands started trembling, I was, my heart was pounding and tears were just flowing because I was thinking back to all that I had gone through from when I first read those headlines about her having Sjogren's and I wrote the book about Sjogren's and then to find out again that it was a gold medal winner. And the day after I read that Venus had Sjogren's, that's actually when I first started writing the book. I identified with a lot of the symptoms she had. So the very next day I began my research and thought, well, maybe this is something that I have also because I had a lot of those symptoms. And when I looked on the Sjogren's Syndrome Foundation website, I identified with upwards of 4 million people who actually have this same autoimmune disease. It's chronic, there's no cure for it. So I thought that was my answer. Maybe that was something that I had. So I sat out on this quest to find five other people who had this disease because I wanted to inspire other people who were facing different challenges in their life. I write a book series of inspirational type books. It's called the Living Inside the Testimony book series. So when I found out about this disease, that was my goal, to find out if this was something that I had so that I could get diagnosed and at the same time share the stories of five other women that would relate to millions of other people who had this same autoimmune disease. And I just wondered how debilitating it really was for Venus to pull out of the U.S. Open and then to find out if this was indeed something that I had as well. So a book review by Eduardo Aduna, for reader's favorite, aptly summarizes what's inside the book. Sjogren's is a touching and inspiring collection of tales that give readers an idea of what Sjogren's syndrome is and the impact it can have on those who have it. The author, Venus Williams, and the five women featured in this book have all had their lives changed due to an encounter with this strange medical condition. The book is easy to read with a flowing narrative that fully shows the author's storytelling abilities. The stories themselves are emotional roller coasters. As a reader, I felt the women's pain, frustrations, hopes, and determination. Their bravery and the love and support of their family are inspiring and heartwarming. Kathy Taylor, Australia Divi, Judy Kane, Lynn Petruzzi, and Paula Beth Sosen have all managed to make the best of their situation. Their stories, together with the author's own journey, inspire not only those at Sjogren's Syndrome, but everyone who has had life-changing challenges and problems. So after I wrote the book, I realized that I had become much stronger because of the five women in the book, and I call them my Fab Five because they're just five everyday women who have Sjogren's Syndrome, but I tell their stories of how they got diagnosed. Because with this disease, it's something that's not easily diagnosed. It can take up to five years to actually get a diagnosis, and you wonder, with someone like Venus, who has, I would imagine, access to the best medical treatment and the best doctors, if it took her years to get diagnosed, what is it about this disease that makes it so much more difficult to diagnose? And it's because it mimics many other diseases, other autoimmune diseases. So I wanted to, again, help raise awareness about the disease to help others who might be experiencing similar symptoms and also to raise funds because they need to do more research, hopefully one day find a cure for it, but until then, at least to raise awareness about the disease so that more people know about it and if they are having these symptoms, they can get diagnosed. So after I wrote the book and after being inspired by the Fab Five in the book, I decided I just needed to do more than just write the book. So I had this idea that I would join Team Sjogren's in a half marathon. and. It had actually been 30 years since I had run at all back in high school. So all of a sudden I'm committed to running with this team to do a half marathon. So I started training with them. It was a whole 16 week course of training and we'd have conference calls and different things. And I never really let on during the conference calls that I was having problems with my training. So I wondered why I was kind of being a wimp about it 
because you know my leg was hurting, my knee was hurting, my ankle was hurting. I was posting these pictures on Facebook with my knee braised and my ankle braised and you know, poor me and you know, four pairs of tennis shoes later, I'm still training with them and not letting anybody know that I was hurting. But when I actually did the race and did the whole 13.1 miles in the pouring down rain, just to cross that finish line, it was like the culmination of everything that I had been experiencing since I first read the headlines about Venus having it. So just to be able to go through all of that, to make it through, and once again, thinking back on the Fab Five because I had come to really admire them, their determination and their strength, and just knowing that they had to endure so much and I had to endure enough during the training, even though I felt like I was being a wimp about it, but at least I did finish the half marathon. So I came home just excited, exhilarated that I had actually accomplished what I set out to do. And I did help the team. We did raise awareness. We did raise thousands of dollars. So it was a good experience, but my knee was still bothering me. So I just quit running cold turkey, no more running after 16 weeks of it. And a month later, still having symptoms, I went back to the doctor, the same doctor that had told me before to give up running and that I might should try swimming instead. But of course I had committed to the team so I couldn't give it up and I was committed to them. So I went back a month later and said, it's been a month and my knee still hurts. So I did an MRI. It showed that I had torn my meniscus cartilage in my right knee. So all this time where I thought I was just being kind of wimpy, I in fact had a torn meniscus and that was the reason why I was having so many problems. So even during my training, I had trained with this torn meniscus, had crossed the finish line with this torn meniscus, so that made me feel better. I really wasn't a wimp. There really was something wrong. And even with that, I'm still thinking about the Fab Five, the five women that I had written about, and all the obstacles that they had to overcome. And then I started reflecting back just on my journey from when I first started writing the book and over the two-year period from when I started writing until I found out the book had won a gold medal. I had actually gone through the experience of losing four people very close to me. I lost my father, my father-in-law, and my mother-in-law all within that same time frame. And in addition to those three deaths, you know, people that I just love dearly, people that are very close to me, I also lost a dear friend who was just horribly murdered and she left behind two small children and just a whole lot of unanswered questions about why this happened and it brings to mind the serenity prayer and I just reflect back on that and how I had to be willing to accept the things that I couldn't change and just keep going. So I kept going, I was still writing, I was interviewing the five women in the book at different periods over that time. And I just had to keep going. They kept going so I knew I had to keep going because I had committed to writing the book and even during this process of dealing with the death of so many people that I love so dearly, I found out that my mother had breast cancer. So she had her surgery and two weeks after I brought her home from having breast cancer surgery, I was laying on the ultrasound table and there was this radiologist looking down at me and I'm looking up and he's like, mm, I don't know what it is. Maybe we need to do a biopsy to find out if this is cancer or not. So I'm looking up at him, it's like, mm, you better figure out what it is because my mom just had breast cancer surgery and even her mom had passed away years ago after having breast cancer surgery. So I'm thinking, figure out what it is and, and take care of it. So going through all of that, I kept writing because my goal was to actually unveil the book in this national book launch at the 2013 Sjogren's Syndrome Foundation National Patient Conference. So I had about four weeks or four months left to finish everything, to have it ready to unveil. So whatever they needed to do, they needed to do it quickly because I had to keep writing. So I ended up having the surgery. It wasn't cancer. It was a phylloides tumor that they had to remove. And I just kept writing through all of that. And even with the other personal issues, different things, just life in general, being a mom of two boys, two teenage boys who I should say are sort of high maintenance boys, but you know, just life in general. I had to deal with all of that and my heart is tugging at me to finish. I needed to finish the book and the Fab Five was waiting for me so that we could unveil it at this National Patient Conference. So I kept writing, kept working because actually I'm a nurse full time. I tell people that I'm a nurse by profession. 
author by passion and storyteller by the grace of God. So my job as this full-time nurse, I'm actually a nurse case manager and I was burning the midnight oil, still doing my day job as a nurse and writing and doing everything else. And actually it was taking a toll on me naturally and emotionally because the company that I worked for, we had actually gone through an acquisition and it was like this 12 month long drawn out period when we were transitioning from one company to the other. So it was very exhausting. And when I look back now, I realize it must have been just the grace of God that helped me to go through all of that while I was going through so much on my job, the real job, and then writing the book, which is actually the job that I love doing. So again, it must have just been by the grace of God that I survived during all of that. And ultimately, you know, with the surgery and with the injury and with everything else going on, just life in general, I did finish. We were able to unveil the book at the National Patient Conference. So there we were, the five of us, the five women in the book and me. That was the first time we had all actually met in person. So there we were at the National Patient Conference with over 400 other Sjogren's patients, with doctors, with members of the Sjogren's Syndrome Foundation, board of directors, a two-day conference, and we unveiled the book, and it was wonderful. I actually got to meet all of them in person because prior to this time, it was just voices over the phone when I was interviewing them to hear their stories so that I could write about them. So there we were, and I met Kathy Taylor, Australia Bibby, Judy Kane, Lynn Petrucci, and Paula Sosin. We had a wonderful time, but after all of that was open, the book was a huge success there. It was actually the number one bestseller. I became even more motivated than ever that I needed to do more than just that. The proceeds from the book sales were going to the foundation for research and better treatment options and all of that. But I just didn't want that to be the end of it. I wanted to continue raising funds and increase awareness even more than that. And we had raised money selling the book. We had raised money when I did the half marathon, but it was time to try to figure out what else I could do. So three months after I had run the half marathon, still with my bum knee that I didn't have surgery on yet because I was putting off the surgery. I'm a nurse, but I didn't want to have surgery. So I was putting it off. And Australia Bibby, one of the women in the book, she's actually the founder and director of Team Sjogren's California. And she coordinates things for the state of California to help raise funds and for the, the increasing of awareness and all of that. So she was putting on an event that was part of the 10K Wharf to Wharf in Santa Cruz, California. And she asked me to run the 10K there and to have a book signing and all of that in Santa Cruz. So I said yes even though I hadn't had surgery yet and shouldn't have been running and of course the doctor had said just swim instead. So I kind of ran, kind of walked, or really I just walked. I ran when I saw the cameras because I wanted the photo op with the camera with me running. But otherwise my husband and I, we went and kind of walked and you know completed this 10K, raised more money and awareness and all of that. So when we crossed that finish line, just total jubilee that we had accomplished what we set out to do again and increase awareness and raise more funds for the foundation and for Sjogren's Syndrome research. Then two weeks after we got home, my husband was there with me again by my side, but this time it was bringing me home from another surgery. I'd had a hysterectomy and actually had been having problems, same time frame as everything else, and it had gotten to the point where I really couldn't tolerate that anymore, so I had to go ahead and schedule the surgery. So. Two weeks later, I'm coming home from having a hysterectomy. So when I think back, and again, like when I read that email, reasons why my hands were trembling, my heart was pounding, you know, and just tears flowing is because I had gone through more than what I had expected to, because I thought I was writing to book the book to inspire other people. And I realized the five women in the book had inspired me they had faced many crossroads, many challenges in their life, and so had I during this whole process. And they were able to endure, I was able to endure, so maybe I needed to write the book for myself too, because I've learned so much from them. I hope to inspire other people as you read their stories to learn from how they have gone through life challenges, any obstacle, any, any situation where you need to make decisions and overcome certain things. I learned through them that I could do the same thing. So I kept going and kept going. And finally, the time had come for us to actually go to Miami for the award ceremony because, like I said, when I started, the book won the gold medal. So when I boarded that plane from Memphis to Miami, headed to the award ceremony, I knew that it was gonna be a life-changing experience. 
And by now I had also had my knee surgery to fix the torn cartilage, my meniscus in the right knee. So I walked across that stage three weeks after surgery, which was a task just to walk across the stage to get the gold medal because I had just had the surgery, but I was determined in my gold shoes, my high heel shoes, to get that gold medal. So I walked across the stage. And when they put that gold medal around my neck, it was like the five women in the book were there with me. And the four million people that have struggles, all the people who don't know that they have it yet because the symptoms are so vague sometimes, I just felt like all of that was coming with me and crossing the stage with me. And it was like the ultimate thing just to be relieved to know that I had brought about that much awareness about the disease and that people enjoyed the book that much to want to read the story about the five women who had endured so much and had come out conquerors and had done so well. The event itself, it was more like a red carpet event. There were celebrity authors there, you know, people just like me, some wearing the same gold medal that I had, some had bronze, some had silver, but we were all there to celebrate our books and people from Australia, Singapore, United Kingdom, India, just all across America, we were all there for the same thing, to receive the awards for our, our books. So after I got home, I'm still thinking about these past two years. And I think about Venus Williams and how she triumphed from the time that she found out she had Sjogren's and that had been what was causing her symptoms for so many years. She pulled out of the U.S. Open in 2011, but then just one year later, she's at the Olympics and she won a gold medal in the Olympics just a year after probably being at her lowest point all of a sudden. She had come back. She still has the disease, of course, because it's chronic, there's no cure. But she was able to overcome. She won that gold medal. She won at Wimbledon as well, and just things happened for her, and I reflect back on my gold medal. She won one because, in spite of having Sjogren's, actually, now I won a gold medal, not really despite of it, but because of it. So I'm absolutely convinced that others will also be inspired to look at life challenges and be able to overcome as well. Just like she won gold, even with Sjogren's Syndrome, I won gold because I wrote the book about Sjogren's. My prayer for everyone else is that you will win too, regardless of challenges you may face in life, you can win also.